If you're in the middle income category, you've likely noticed it's harder to afford a new home. New data from the National Association of Realtors shows only about a quarter of homes on the market are affordable for the average American household or those making about $75,000 a year. Just five years ago, nearly half of the listings on the market were affordable for the average American household. So uh, you're telling me there's a chance. Economist strategist Amit Rochelle is here. He's the founder of Macro Trends Advisors, a real estate investment firm. Good morning to you, sir. You know, homes, of course, more expensive, and then you've got interest rates that have been way up. What's your advice for people who are making that middle income to get a new home and actually be able to afford one? Well, obviously, you start by saving as much as you can because you're probably going to need a bigger down payment because you, you don't want to borrow as much as you would have because interest rates are up. But my best advice is always just do your homework. I think most people don't really do the extra hard homework to know what every house has sold for in their community. So when one comes on the market that may need some, you know, TLC, maybe a fixer upper, you really know what the market is. And if you can get something a little cheaper, you know it when you see it and you got to be ready to pounce on it. Yeah, well, the survey that we're referencing with some of the stats uh, is that Ohio cities like Akron and Toledo, they actually had the most affordable homes in the country. Not surprising that L.A. had only 1% of affordable homes for the market, but is there a situation where people should look for unique properties, one where there's a house with mother-in-law's quarters that they could rent out? I mean, though they're going to be few and far between for those as well. Yeah, I think, um, Adrian, the, the biggest issue right now is that we have probably the lowest level of homes on the market than we've had in modern history. Uh, you know, right uh, before the financial crisis, we had 14 months supply of homes. That's over a year's worth of homes. Now we have less than three months supply. So part of the reason why things have been so it's such slim pickings is what's really driving up the price. Um, so, yeah, sure, if you find a home, find a home that has uh, a mother-in-law suite or something you could rent out to offset uh, the cost of your, you know, your residency, great idea. My only uh, word of caution to buyers is being a landlord isn't easy. Um, and a lot of people think it's a, a great uh, get-rich-quick scheme. But the phone does ring in the middle of the night when your tenant has a problem and you got to be there to fix it for them. Yeah, good point. Uh, are we predicting a housing crash because of this low inventory? No, I think it's the opposite. I think the thing that's preventing the housing crash is the low inventory. Um, the fact of the matter is just on a very macro basis, uh, we are creating more households. That's when children move out of their parents' homes. Then we are creating new supply of homes. So just basic econ 101, supply and demand. If demand exceeds supply, prices go up. You would have thought with you know inflation and everything going on in the economy that we would have seen a housing crash, especially when interest rates doubled. But the fact of the matter is supply remains low, which is really what's keeping the prices high. Mitch Rochelle, thank you so much. I hope people use this information wisely and stay patient while they keep renting. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.